Daniel Dobbins was born when the United States of America was only one day old, here in Lewiston, Pennsylvania. Dobbins was the son of pioneers, British colonials, who carved out a humble existence in craggy cliffs and hillsides of central PA. For the first five years of Daniel's life, his country fought a bloody revolution that ended with an uneasy peace against a much stronger foe. The peace treaty would be threatened many times until it was permanently broken in the first years of the 19th century. It was then that Dobbins would be called upon by a new nation to do something that no country in history had done, build a fleet to defeat a British armada. His nation now at war, Dobbins became a prisoner of the British crown and was incarcerated at Fort Michilimackinac. Dobbins was eventually paroled, recaptured, and paroled again. He joined the militia and led skirmishes on Fort Detroit. In fact, his militia was a constant thorn in the side of the garrison's commander, General Hull. Dobbins was captured a third time, and this time sentenced to death. But before his execution, he made a daring escape and took a perilous journey back home to Port Erie. Tired and near starved, he made the decision to head to Washington, the new capital, and report on the grave situation on the northwestern frontier. Dobbins was a businessman and a sailor. He was not a politician. Yet he convinced President Madison and the U.S. Navy to build a fleet of warships at Erie. The fleet was built near the foot of Liberty Street during one of Erie's famous winters. Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry arrived in the spring and took command of the shipbuilding effort and led the fleet of green-timbered ships to victory in the Battle of Lake Erie on September 10, 1813. Perry appointed Dobbins to command the U.S. schooner Ohio, but was sent back to Erie for supplies, and Dobbins missed the famous battle. Daniel Dobbins remained in the Navy after the war. In 1829, he was appointed captain in the U.S. Revenue Cutter Service. In that position, he honored himself again with his involvement in the Underground Railroad. He helped escaped slaves evade slave catchers by offering free passage to Canada. Dobbins had over 40 years of service on the Great Lakes. He died at the age of 80 on February 29, 1856. And he's buried here, not far from the Lake Erie shoreline where he built a fleet, defeated a foe, and secured a nation.